Let's learn about the AWS Pricing Calculator. If you go out to a search engine, you can type in AWS Pricing Calculator, and you'll come to a link that is calculator.aws. So we go there, and here's the entry point to the calculator. And up on the right, you see Create Estimate. Let's click there. OK, notice that at the time of this recording, there are 117 services meaning that if you're going to try to get an estimate for the things that you're spending within the AWS environment, there are at least 117 different things that you could be getting charged for that they can give you an estimate for using this calculator. And in this video, we want to specifically look at pricing out EC2. So if we type in EC2, uh, this option will come up. Let's click configure. Okay. If we want to, we could give our estimate that we're about to create a name. Um, but let's go ahead and scroll up and down real quick here. So by default on this page, they've put together an estimate for some computer, some virtual machine that's going to cost us in excess of $64 per month. Of that, $3 is for the hard drive space and $61 and change is for the cost of some specific EC2 instance. Okay. Um, all right, so we go to the top and let's notice a few different things. One is our price is based on a region. Uh, it is possible for um, different services to cost different amounts at different places in the world. So if I were to pick, I think, some Asian countries, I might see some of the costs go up a little bit. Uh, even within the United States, some regions can be a little bit more expensive or less expensive. Uh, this region selection it not only applies to EC2, but potentially other services that you might look at in the cloud environment. Uh, next section here, notice that there's a quick estimate and an advanced estimate. We're going to look at this from the quick estimate percentage for, uh, perspective, first of all. And uh, so here's some of the key information. What is the particular instance that you're trying to get an estimate on? Um, from this dropdown, you can see the different operating systems that are available. Note that for some of these, like Windows Server, it's going to cost a little bit more to run that instance on a minute by minute or monthly basis because there are licensing fees that AWS would have to pay for in order to offer that to you. So some operating systems cost more than others. Linux uh, by itself, if it's an Amazon um, Linux version, typically is not going to cost you um, anything uh, in addition to their base price, but the other ones will have some additional cost if you choose Windows, for example. All right, so we scroll down a little bit and we see virtual CPUs and the default is four and memory is 16 gigs. So we could change that, but based on the, the defaults that are in there, it's guessing that you would this, this would equate to the specification to a T4 or a T family and it's a T4G dot extra large instance and that has a certain standard hourly cost associated with it. And there's a lower cost if you do a reserved or pay in advance um, way of paying for this. Uh, if I were to drop this down a little bit and do, for example, one CPU and two gigs, uh, that changes to T4G.small is the most likely thing that you would be looking for. Okay, um, so let's scroll down here. How many are you planning on paying for? One. Um, how much utilization are you going to be getting out of that thing? Um, really, the, the key part, I think, is this pricing strategy right here, and it really demonstrates some of the cost differences. Uh, let me scroll down to the bottom. Based on the much less expensive instance that I have selected, it's now just $10.67 uh, per month. And the key part here is the 767, which relates not to the storage, but to the actual instance and, and the hardware itself. So if we go back up here, notice that the default here says that's how much it's going to cost per month based on reserving it for one year. So telling them that you're going to be paying for it for a year uh, with no upfront costs. The uh, on-demand pricing is what people get when they just go through a regular menu and say launch an instance. They call that on-demand. Uh, so you, you're not telling them um, that you're going to reserve it for a year, use it for a year, you're going to promise to pay for a year, you're going to spin it up for a minute or an hour a day, and then turn it back off again. 
So if I remember, we were at 767 a second ago. If I select, uh, select instead on demand without any promise to use it beyond, well, we're not going to tell them when we're going to stop using it. Well, that cost suddenly is now 1226. Uh, not such a big deal for a small instance, but let's go ahead and get something much bigger. So let's just say we have eight CPUs and I don't know, 16 gigs. Okay, uh, this is an A1.2x large and 20 cents an hour is the on-demand cost. So that is gonna be $150 a month. And if I switch that over to paying in advance, it's gonna be $93 per month. And then if I say, hey, I'm gonna pay up front for that one year, uh, it's gonna be, well, I'll have to, I'd have to do the math, but it's going down if we divide that by 12. Maybe I will have to do that. Um, and if I do a three-year reservation and pay everything up front, 2,000. Uh, let's just have a little fun with that. We'll go equals 2,000 divided by 36 months. So now we're down to $55 and change per month. And that's a, a pretty sig... So we started, I think, at about $150 a month. And if we're willing to pay in advance, we can get that all the way down to $50 a month. Uh, and we and if we have a long-term reservation. Okay, so this is a key thing that's going to impact how much you're going to pay. Uh, note also you have your storage. Um, let's kind of... Let's, let's switch this back to something else for a moment. Let's not do pay in advance. Let's just say on demand because it's easier to see the costs broken out right here. Uh, obviously, with our instance, we could increase the amount of storage. Let's go ahead and double this. And we just went from $3 to $6 per month. So the cost per gigabyte doesn't seem to be very much compared to the cost for the actual hardware that's running. Um, but let's go ahead and change something else. We don't get to see a whole lot of options in this quick estimate, but if we click on advanced estimate and we scroll down, it gives us some different ways of viewing the information that we already selected. Um, but uh, importantly, if we scroll down far enough, we get this data transfer field. And when you talk with experts, they say most people don't consider the cost of data transfer uh, meaning the data either going into AWS or the data going out of AWS. Let's just say that we're going to get a terabyte of traffic going into our EC2 instance and a terabyte of traffic going back out. And, and it's more likely you'll get, a, if this is a web server, for example, you'll get a quick little HTTP request coming in, which is small, and then you're going to download a massive page or a lot of data. So the real stuff is going to be flowing out. So let's just see. Uh, and, and look at this oftentimes ignored aspect of estimating the cost of running an EC2 instance. So let's just say we're going to say traffic from the internet, we're going to have one terabyte per month coming in. And this is just a, a rough estimate. Um, as it is, um, actually, well, it's, uh, it actually doesn't add anything currently. Um, but uh, if we add, so let's just look at that cost. So right now we're looking at, um, uh, we're paying monthly cost estimate. Okay. It looks like it's setting, it's, uh, assuming that we're paying in advance on this one. Let's click this, change this over to on demand. Okay. So on demand, um, we're looking at $3 per month. That seems a little, uh, the, the math seems a little weird on this. Well, at any rate, I just want to see the, the data in, transfer in and out. So we'll, we'll say I'm going to transfer information back out to the Internet and a terabyte of that. And so this is really what I wanted to show off. Um, regardless of what your instance costs, um, when I was doing this previously a few minutes ago, I, I, it gave me the standard amounts like, you know, $7 a month or $50 a month, $150 or whatever. So keep that type of estimate in mind. But what I really wanted to demonstrate here is that if you uh, include a certain amount of data transfer, that data transfer out per month can be just as much in this um, third line down as a, a relatively good EC2 instance in terms of the hardware. So um, again, there's a base cost for the EC2 instance, uh, sometimes nominal cost for the uh, storage, but the data transfer can actually be well beyond what the actual instance costs. 
And again, you could do this um, not only for EC2 instances, but lots of other services as well.